What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited. Why? Because we're doing another Yu-Gi-Oh! GX profile and in today's video we're featuring Chaz Princeton. The one, the only Chaz and in today's video we're doing an Arm Dragon deck profile. I guess you would call it Arm Dragon Thunder deck profile but it's Arm Dragon let's be honest. I think this deck is insanely cool and the really nice thing about this deck is that it actually doesn't lose to the cards that a lot of people are playing to beat tier limits, to bleat Fluanderies. This deck doesn't lose to those kinds of cards but it can play the kind of cards that beat those decks which is absolutely insane so if you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays product openings all that good stuff it's right here on the channel so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that let's get right into the deck profile all right i'm gonna need you guys to say with me now chaz it up chaz it up bro i'm super excited to be bringing you guys Guys, arm dragon big shout out to the boy Sperado because that is the guy who kind of taught me how to play this deck showed me how to do it and honestly I love this deck and in today's format I found a really cool way to play it on top of that it's one of those kind of like anti-meta decks I guess you could call it because funny enough everyone is playing bestials and everyone is playing anti tier hate but this deck doesn't lose to any of the anti tier hate which is really really cool so that's why I think I've been loving this deck so let's get right into this profile because I'm going to be excited to be showing it to you guys and you guys can play this competitively in today's format with this sort of build right keep in mind it's still a rogue deck it's not a meta deck however if you wanted to play arm dragons in today's format I think this is probably the best way you're going to want to play it so let's start things off here with of course maxing out on all the arm dragon monsters that you need to max out on three level three three level five 3 level 7, level 7 honestly being the best arm dragon monster, as well as one of the arm dragon level 10 over here. I think these are the perfect ratios. I don't think you'd want to change these up. Keep in mind, you really want to see these card names as much as possible in this deck. At least two of them is honestly the best way to see them. But the thing is, the best card honestly here to see is your pile arm dragon. Pile arm dragon is essentially what ties this entire deck together. It sends to the graveyard is cost, which is really cool. So even if your opponent has some way to, you know, ash blossom this or whatever, which really isn't being played in today's format anyways but it does send as cost which is really cool so that's the really cool thing about this your opponent can't really negate the cost of this card which is actually just the most important part so that's why we're playing the three pile arm dragon one of the best cards if you guys don't know these cards can all level up into each other by sending a monster from your hand to the graveyard and that's kind of why you want to open at least two of them because you can send with the other ones to special summon them and then continue going from there right so that's how the arm dragons work i think this deck is really cool the artwork on these cards is also absolutely really beautiful and then for the rest of the arm dragon cards here we're playing three arm dragon flash this is essentially an e-telly for the deck you special summon a level three arm dragon monster from your deck in defense position it helps you so that when you don't open two monsters let's say you only open a level five or you only open a level seven you just get to your level three and then you can start to level up from there right so flash is just another copy of three which is really nice and then we're playing the one arm dragon lightning lightning has a really cool effect where you can target an arm dragon monster you control and then it can gain attack equal to its level which is really nice because it does help you push for damage keep in mind i don't know if i said this earlier but this is a go second otk kind of style deck and so for for that reason i think that effect actually does come up pretty often but the other really important part of this effect is that if an arm dragon monster you control would be destroyed by card effect you can just send this card from their field to the graveyard instead so it is protection for you which is really nice and then lastly we're playing three catapult turtle catapult turtle is really important because it's extra copies of your arm dragon monsters this is probably your best normal summon in the deck and the thing is it can tribute any monster on the field most of the time you're going to be tributing itself and then you can special summon a level five dragon monster from your hand or deck so just like this card e tellies out your level three this card kind of it's not an e-telly but it's kind of one of those cards that tributes itself to summon your level five and then you can level up from there so that's really important so that's why we have to be maxing out on this again your best normal summon of the deck and then honestly this card is so powerful tempest dragon ruler of storms is so important in this deck and that's why we're playing the one of course if this card came back to two or three you know we're playing two or three of these but for now we have to be playing the one this card is just way too important also i'm just noticing this glare on my face because it just hit my eye but anyways you have to be playing the one tempest tempest is an insanely powerful extender for you on top of this these cards can pitch any monster from your hand and it's actually really powerful when you are pitching the tempest so that's why we're of course playing the one tempest and then that does it for the arm dragon lineup i know these cards like tempest and the catapults are not really arm dragon cards but i'm going to consider them arm dragon cards because they essentially get your arm dragons on the field tempest is your extender for you but it's also a level seven wind dragon which is really important and let me say this now because i think i was mentioning this earlier but i'm going to go into a little bit more detail the really cool thing about this deck is that the bestial monsters for example are really important in today's metagame well it doesn't really matter because if your opponent 
opens multiple bestial cards against your armed dragons which are all wind that's you know doesn't matter like does it really matter no right and people are i guess could be playing dd crow which could affect your deck but really what are you dd crowing that's that important in this deck versus like you know if you're dd crowing a tier limits player right so a lot of the anti-tier cards don't actually do anything against the armed dragon lineup which is very very powerful and that's what i mean by this deck is kind of anti-meta it's not an anti-meta deck but it's kind of one of those things where all the hate that goes against the meta decks doesn't really affect this deck all that much right in fact this deck is a little bit better because nibiru is not that prevalent right now imperm is not ash is not so that's why it kind of boosts this deck just indirectly right so then here we are playing three return of the dragon lords as well this card's insane it's a monster reborn for any of your dragons essentially but it also protects your dragons once in the graveyard so the really cool thing about this deck is it has a lot of like gas has a lot of firepower but funny enough with lightning with return of the dragon lords you have a decent amount of protection as well which is really cool then we're playing three pot of extravagance the reason we're playing extravagance is because you don't really care about your extra deck all that much in this deck and it does help you go through your deck even further you could play prosperity don't get me wrong but again because we're playing a go second version of this build and you want to be otking your opponent that's why i didn't choose to play prosperity i chose to play extravagance and again your extra deck is not that important for your win condition because as soon as you're summoning out a couple of your armed dragon monsters keep in mind these are pretty beefy monsters on their own pile arm dragon helps you gain attack points on this card and so does your lightning if you needed to so that's why it's really powerful i think just in its own in the main deck you don't really need access to the extra deck and that's why extravagance is so good then we are playing the anti-meta stuff like you know our opponent can't really play it against us but we can play it against them. We're playing three Magnemoot, three Druus Worm, as well as three Sarnir. I think you have to be playing three of each of these. Now, they're not good into the Fluandries matchup, but yo, what's the best part about the Fluandries matchup is they put a barrier statue. And what does barrier statue let you not do? Special summon anything, but win monsters. Guess what this entire deck is? wind monsters it's it's actually so crazy that's what i'm saying it's so crazy that this deck is actually funny enough pretty good in today's format because the two best decks of the format which is tier limits and floundries this deck doesn't lose to what the tier limits deck does which every deck is pretty much playing and it also doesn't lose to barrier statue because they're all wins it's just so crazy so we are playing the bestial monsters again because we need to be able to beat the tier limit matchup and these cards are so powerful against that also they help you otk because their bodies on the board then we're playing three raigeki as well as the one harpy's feather duster now why are we playing Playing Raigeki. Raigeki into the tier limit matchup is actually not really that good. However, you can also argue it's not bad either. The reason for that is because even if you start your turn off, let's say with something like a Raigeki, first of all, you're assuming that none of the bestial monsters were in your hand and then you couldn't stop your opponent that way. But Raigeki is also really good because if you're activating the Raigeki, they have to activate all their tier limits effects right there and then. And then once they use all their effects up, all their names, etc, etc, that's when you can start to push for really a lot of damage and be really aggressive because they've already used all their effects, right? So that's why I really like the Regeki, but also it's really good into the Flandries matchup. Your opponent sets up a board of monsters, M pin and whatnot. You just go Regeki and you can proceed to OTK them really easily in this deck. And the one Harpies, of course, to deal with any back row, you're good to go, right? In the side deck, I would probably side Cyclones and Lightning Storms and whatnot as well. But in the main deck, I think the one Harpies is just enough. Now, moving on to the extra deck, we are playing three of the Hieratic Seal, the Heavenly Spheres. This card is insanely powerful. It's probably one of the best, or if not the best, Link monster you can go into when you're forced to go first, or if you're not OTKing your opponent. This is one of the best cards to end on because, you know, it's another form of disruption for you. It also gets you another body on the board when you activate its effect. So Seal is really powerful. I'm playing the one IP, the one Unicorn, and the one Axis Code. These are not really important in the extra deck. Again, most of the stuff here outside of the Spheres and one more card, these cards are not that important. But if you have access to them because you are playing the Bestial Monsters, you can send something like a Druus Worm from your field to the graveyard to Link Climb into a Mascarena. And then once you Link Climb into a Mascarena, then the Druus Worm will activate its effect to send a card your opponent controls. So that's really powerful as well. So that's why I I really like the link monsters in this deck just because you can start to abuse some of the bestial secondary effects right so that's why i like playing these three then the most important card that you're playing in this deck is three odd eyes rebellion dragon as well as three odd eyes rebellion dragon overload this is an otk package for you overload can attack three times and it's 3000 attack this card isn't very powerful. It's one of the most important cards that you are playing, and that's why you're playing three of each because you're playing the extravagance. Then we're playing two Wallow. If this comes up with the Bestial Monsters, it can come up. It's very, very powerful. You can end on this card as well. It's really nice. And then lastly, we're playing the one Zeus. I think this extra deck just makes a lot of sense, so I don't think I would really change this up at all. I think maybe if you wanted to, you could try to fit in an extra Link Monster, but the main Link Monster you're going to be going into is Seals anyway. Maybe IP with your Druid Swarm so that you can go into your Unicorn or Axis Code, but generally, I think this is just the best ratios for the extra deck, especially if you're playing Extravagance. And lastly, I do want to say one thing before we end off the deck profile. We have access to Quakimero Draco as well as Amorphage Sloth. These cards you could argue to play in the main deck because 
if you are going into Hieratic Seals going first, you Hieratic Seals as a disruption, and then Hieratic can summon either one of these, which is now a floodgate on your side of the field. I wanted to give you guys that option, but the reason I'm deciding not to play these two in the main deck is just because, again, it is a blind go second deck. You could cut potentially one of the bestial monsters just to play one of these. I wouldn't recommend playing both. I'm just showing you guys these are two options that you guys can be playing. So you play one or the other. But the thing is, like, I just didn't want to brick on them. I'd rather open like a Sarnir, for example, because Sarnir is the only bestial you can cut to two, right? Let's say you cut Sarnir to two and you play one of these. I would rather open the Sarnir than open a Sloth. And so that just kind of was my logic. You can definitely play one of these in the side deck because if your opponent does force you to go first, you can end on your Hieratic Spheres and then go into this as a Floodgate on their turn, right? So maybe siding one of these is really cool. I don't know if I would recommend main decking it, especially in a going second build. In a going first build, maybe. Actually, for sure in a going first build. But for this build, I think these just make a lot more sense in the side deck. But that's it for the deck. 40 cards in the main deck, 15 cards in the extra deck. This deck is insane. I'm so excited to be playing it in today's format. Again, it is a rogue tier deck. Don't expect to take this to a YCS and win with it. But if you guys do want to play at a casual level, but also be able to compete against tier limits at your locals, this is a really cool way to go about it because you're not losing to full wanderies. This deck inherently just has an, I mean, they're all wins, right? Like they inherently can do stuff against low wanderies. And then it doesn't lose to the cards that beat the tier limit matchup, which everyone is basically playing in today's format. So I hope you guys enjoyed the profile. I'm really excited because I think this deck is super, super cool. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my take on Arm Dragon for today's format. This is an OTK build of Arm Dragon. You really want to go second. You're playing a bunch of board breakers in Raigeki, but you're also playing the Bistial monsters, which is really, really powerful. And this deck can put out a lot of damage really, really quickly. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff. You'll find it right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all that i really appreciate every single one of you we got to 8,000 subscribers before the new year that was the goal honestly what the next goal is 10,000. probably not going to happen before the new year but 10,000 is the next goal let's make it happen thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace